you coming in can go ahead and, and do that hi youtube hey well for you guys this might be two separate videos for us this is this is a single viewing man uh we're going from one to the other and we're about to finish bochi the rock and it's been one hell of a journey guys um everyone in here is saying hi bye youtube because you know for us it's the last time that we're actually approaching i guess the anime for season one in this way up until there's a season two fingers crossed <laughs> but i do want to say hey all of the videos we've ever watched in this channel in terms of bochi are grounded in psychological principles every single one and i want to go ahead and throw this out there the purpose of this whole channel has been for psychological you know like mental health purposes right mental health awareness and spreading like what true psycho psychology means there's a lot of people out there who try and hide under the veil of like truly being in love with the community or something like that while literally just using them and jumping tide whenever the opportunity comes. I love anime. I've been doing this for two years or uh, like started with ReZero coming all the way up to now. And what I really, really want to go ahead and say is anime has helped me learn and grow in a way that I think a lot of people aren't like downplay, right? A lot of people downplay the importance that is video games and anime and the way that we're able to go ahead and learn and be able to go ahead and incorporate certain elements of our teachings and whatnot. While you guys are viewing other individuals out there who consider themselves professionals in any field, especially if it comes to psychology, always make sure to question, hey, where are your sources? Where are you coming up with this? Not just throwing out Maslow's hierarchy of needs or, you know, random things like that. Make sure that they're bringing up, actually, for example, this is Braun from Renner Sociological Theory, doing a Radzar with everyone, Maslow's with the actual uh, Sternberg's uh, Triangle of Love, you know, Goldberg's Moral Developmental Theory, all the different psychological theories that we brought up using their actual works and actually mentioning where they're from and not just talking in riddles. Yeah, but Lyric Cake, yes, I'm enjoying uh, Bochi. The reason why I'm bringing all of this up is because there are in the, or even cognitive distortions, you know, because there are people out there who try to hide under the guise of mental health professionals or whatever uh, in order to try and like, you know, ride a community, ride a wave, ride whatever. But my main thing is I love the show for what it represents. I love the show for what it is. And genuinely, for me, this has been a learning opportunity for seeing how close like how an anime. This is why this is why this show is this show is an S tier show for me. And Moshiko Tensei and ReZero are other S-tier shows that I throw up there, but this show in particular is an S-tier show for me. It doesn't rely on previous anime tropes, i.e. I don't have to explain a degenerate joke that they're making to new people that are coming in to watch the show for them to understand what is happening, right? And for me, this blows my mind. I was able to introduce this to not just like young therapy groups, to older ladies as well in a group session. And be like, all right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about what's going on here. Have you ever been like this? And I'll tell you guys what, a majority of people were like, she's just like us, for real, for real. <laughs> and yes, we will be analyzing the album of Bochi the Rock. We'll be talking a little bit about the lyrics, a little bit about the music and everything. But I just wanted to go ahead and throw that out there. I am so grateful for each and every single one of you guys for helping out, for being here. Um, yeah, it doesn't rely on anime language or rest on communicative shortcuts tropes. Yep, it's sweet. And that's, that's exactly why I like it. That's exactly why this anime, I ranked it as an S tier because of that. It doesn't rely on previous tropes for you to understand what is happening or the dynamics of the characters. A guy who hasn't watched anime in years. Yeah, Finfran, exactly. I am going to be eating. I am going to be talking throughout the entire thing. But I also want to bring this up to um, a chat here. Hey, if you have any psychological questions about any of the characters... Do let me know. If you guys see me looking around, what you guys are going to get out of this is straight up analysis of Bochi as we're going through it. I know I've made a lot of psychological predictions about it. But why don't we go to just jump into it? Also, I appreciate all of you guys being here. Make sure to like, subscribe, share this around. Hey, we tend to do this every Friday and Sunday for like any anime that you guys vote for. So come on, on over to Twitch. This is the way that we do it. And then later on, it gets upload uploaded onto YouTube. Appreciate y'all. Practice some self-care. Um, let's go. That's the best way for me to put it. Let's go. That's a big wiener. That's a big dog. <laughs> Woo! We just started in my mind. Hold on. That's a big uh, corn dog. 
<laughs> we just Yo. started. Sorry, that's a big hot th corn dog. Hot th <laughs> we just started. Sorry. <laughs> what are you doing this to yourself? Sorry, I thought it was okay. I'm just okay. Yes, <laughs> daddy. Ah, uh, fair. I love her friends. I love Ryo and Nijika. I'm just going to go ahead and talk about this. Also, Ryo has the drip. And honestly, I would feel like extremely underdressed around her in a situation like this. But let's go into Bochi real quick, right? Hold on. And I know that we're only 42 seconds in and you guys are about to get a big conversation about it. Let's go into Bochi. Yeah, her friends are goaded. And honestly, friends like that are friends to go ahead and like fight over in every single shape and form right so we're we're, we're going into it who's ahead from my expectation yeah hold on okay so i know i've gone over master's hierarchy of needs a thousand times but the reason why we always tend to go over this is for example if you don't for example if you don't have your safety or physiological needs and you're going into therapy i'm sorry but you should not be there you should not be in therapy if your safety needs and physiological needs are not met. Why? Because more than likely, a majority of, like, you know, uh, self-actualization, the top of the pyramid, it's not going to be happening for you to be able to go and fix all of this. Without your basic needs being met, that is not, you know, you can't go ahead and, like, touch the, like, fix the rest of the triangle if you don't have your, like, base needs met. With Bochi, in a scenario like this where, you know... You have to be present. You have to, you know, be in this, like, work in this environment, have a lot of people around you. You guys know what I'm thinking? I'm going immediately into uh, essentially like the parasympathetic nervous system here. Fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, right? What do I think Bochi's going to do in a scenario like this? I think she might isolate herself. I think she might hide. I think it might be one of those moments where it's too overwhelming in, a, in an environment where she might not be able to go ahead and say, no, I can't do this. And she might go ahead and isolate herself or shy away from like everyone else because she doesn't want to go ahead and like have the confrontational moment like a majority of us do. Having confrontation sucks in any way, shape or form. Right. It is what it is. Uh, breaking up with someone, telling someone no, it, it's, it's, it could be hard. But also Bochi is like slowly evolving in many different ways. But in this scenario, I feel like Bochi would take it into like the like flight. She would run away. She would run away in an aspect that would like, I think probably her classmates are questioning like where she is or what's going on. If it were to come true, this is just based off of psychology. I'm just going off of what I know of Bochi and what we've seen of Bochi, right? Although if she's in there, she's more than likely going to be extremely stressed out. So either A, she's in there and she's extremely stressed out to the point where, you know, she's like glitching out, like glitch bochi, or two, she's isolated herself or she's like distanced herself as a way of self-care and as a coping mechanism. The reason why we're going into this and why the immediacy of this is hitting is because her friends might be, and friends are one of the most important grounding and support networks that we have as individuals, right? So I feel like for bochi, right? There's a difference between Bochi offstage and Bochi on stage. When Bochi's on stage, Bochi's a type of individual that would probably do anything at this point in time to like help support her band, right? If she's out there and like let's say that she's playing the guitar and like, you know, drumsticks are breaking and like her string just fucking snaps and she's like, oh, fuck, you know, and like the, the band's just going hard, like you know, and like they're like, fuck, uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? She's the type of individual that would step up because of that, like, you know, it's something precious to her to try and like keep people's attention on her and try and do something, right? I.e. like try and improvise something. Um, do something embarrassing, maybe fall off the stage or trip or, you know, try and like rock harder down in the ground. Bochi is a type of individual that when it comes to an onstage Bochi, the phenomenal Bochi that sold the Tokyo Dome in her like idealized version is very different than the Bochi offstage when her friends, friends aren't around. When her friends aren't around, all of a sudden that fight or flight kicks in and she's more than likely going to go ahead and like 
uh, fly. You know, she's more than likely going to go to an isolate herself. And that's what I'm going off of. This is brought from Brenner's Ecological Theory. And again, you can put any character in this and quite Anita? literally start developing where they're going through this. Thanks so much for the follow, Sinful Bit. I appreciate it. So, for example, if you wanted to, you could throw Ro, you can throw Nijika, you can throw Dorito Girl's sister, you can throw PA-san. You can throw anyone in here and you'd automatically start seeing whether or not their Anita? actions are realistic or unrealistic. Arbiz, I appreciate the follow, man. So with that, and by the way, any good therapist is running this in their mind. Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, Brad from Brenner's, uh, Piaget's Developmental Theory, Kohlberg's Moral Development. We're running this through our heads as we're talking to you, as we're trying to go ahead and see what is going on and if your actions or not were limited or actually, like, you know, appropriate. So, sorry, guys. I, I <laughs> We're just getting started, but this is something that, like, I'm looking at this and immediately this is what's coming to mind as, like, hey... It might be a really, really important moment for. So masters bought from Brenner theory, because uh, a lot of people will shift into narrative. Like, what is your narrative, right? About certain situations. Well, guess what? Sometimes our narratives are like are quite literally formed by our attachments, by the events that happen that influence the way that we connect with others. Right. Brought from Brenner theory, bought from Brenner's ecological theory and sociological imagination, otherwise known for a lot of you guys that are in the undergrad. Um, it helps a ton with being able to connect certain dots and make predictions, like not just predictions, but help clients see sort of the cyclical nature of their own cycle without going into the theories of change, right? Because theories of change only happen for those individuals that already have some of these like um, things met where they're like, you know, for example, they already have their baselines needs met and they're trying to go ahead and start a theory of change up above in the middle cycle, you know, of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, anyone can start a cycle of change in any way, shape, or form, but meeting our base needs are sort of what help us reach self-actualization. But yes, it helps fill in a lot of gaps for clients and it helps them, allow them to see sort of a lot of the areas in like, um, I'm, I personally study Ed's anime theory. I know, dude, one of these days I hope to be like, uh, well, I, I guess I am the anime therapist <laughs> in some way, shape, or form, uh, you know, but anyway, let's go ahead and continue, guys. <laughs> Seconds and I would have gotten the yeah, I would have gotten the oh, I would have gotten the solution, guys. Oh, okay, let me take a drink for that one. That was uh, <laughs> I predicted gonna... all of this, you know, all of it, Mr. E, just like me. For yeah, I, I, I could, I would okay, sorry, I predicted chat. all of this, you know, Simpho, no, not you too. <laughs> all right, let's continue. <laughs> I see that. If I had my maid dress and I, if I had my maid dress and I knew that this was gonna be a maid episode, I would have worn it for stream. I would have worn it for this finale, but I don't. I don't. I don't know. Y'all clearly saw. どこ行ったんだろう。とりあえず女子トイレ片っ端から探すか。え、全部。いや。後藤さんはそんな白口中人のいるところにはいきませんよ。うん。じゃあどこを探せば教えてきた博士。では、解説していこうと思うわ。ま
what's wild is um I would actually feel the opposite way in some scenarios, but I can see how for Bochi this is hard, you know, because i.e. her band is her safe place. But usually when I'm with friends, I'm more of like, let's do wild, crazy shit because you're in a support circle that you know you can get away with doing, like, stupid stuff. But with Bochi, it's more like, I don't want my band to see me this way, and that's, like, her priority. Again, what do you prioritize in your life? And also... I know I mentioned this last time, kind of showed the picture of me in a trash can, the way, same way Bochi is. Um, we all hold different idealized versions of ourselves. Bochi wants to be Bochi the rock star. Bochi the one that's able to go into the Tokyo Dome. Bochi this incredible individual. But yet, on the other hand, she's also Bochi the one that hides in a cardboard box, uh, Metal Gear Solid style, and doesn't want to come out because change is scary. There are some clear steps that need to happen to go from her idealized version of Bochi the rock star to Bochi, you know, La Piedrita that's hiding under, like, you know, under her box. And we've seen some progressions. We've seen some clear steps that she's taking. My big thing now, and this is why I'm saying, I, I'm waiting for the moment that Bochi has to make something, because in a live show, in any environment, um, as a previous theater director, as individuals that I've had my own band and stuff, uh, nothing goes quite as planned on the show. Stuff's going to break. Um, people get mad. People are on their phones and all of that. And you have to be able to go ahead and overcome. And if I ever have anything to say to any of you guys, like any class or like, you know, if you're like, dude, uh, what class can I go ahead and take to like that might help me with my anxiety? Psychology is a great way of understanding yourself, right? But I'm going to be straight up with you. Theater, improv, music is a great way of being able to go ahead and start expressing yourself. And if you want to go ahead and start, like, first off, getting learning how to deal with the unexpected, try improv. You know, want to go ahead and start, like, building a community, try some theater groups. Try something, D&D groups, anything out there, guys. As I said, psychology is very good for introspection, right? But the change takes space. Uh, pay, like, the change actually happens outside of that introspection. And I also love the fact that her group members are so aware of her behaviors that they're able to go ahead and, like, you know, start... Like, the, the dynamic that it plays into itself is so well played, it's beautiful. It's an interesting turnaround on group behavior based on the lack of confidence in your place among friends due to social anxiety or trust in general. Absolutely. Um, but with that, you know, and, and, and again, this is sort of one of those cognitive distortion, distortions or lyric cake. Because who knows you better than your friends, Right? A random group of people might actually look at you weird and they might be judgmental as to a group of friends who already know the way you act and they're more open to the idea of who you are as an individual, which is quite interesting that those cognitive distortions, by the way, we all have self-talk, we all have cognitive distortions, and there's like different different ways that we, I actually encourage self-talk to anyone that has the ability to go ahead and do that, i.e. talk to yourself, is this a smart decision, is this a dumb decision, try it out loud, it's a good way of going ahead and like start like, you know, processing your story, your things, whatever may be happening. But in a scenario like this, you know, seeing the way that she anthropomorphizes things, seeing, seeing some of her cognitive distortions that is honestly like catastrophication almost instantly, you start to come into mind the pink blob of a social anxiety, exactly simple bit. Um, and even like the fact that she might be on the spectrum, she scores high enough for that. You start to put into mind like, wait a minute, where would, so, like, how long or, like, what what elements of change would it take for her to start growing? And it's her friends. It's her support network. And that's honestly why it's beautiful. Like, her friends and her support network are sort of what's grounding her into reality and ke help keeping her move. Anyway, sorry, guys. I'm going too long. I'm going too long. Let's get... PBS music, yeah. <laughs> Time to unsub. I'll be honest. I've I've gotten some comments like that, um, and it, it fucks you up. As, as a, I'll, I'll state this out there. Hey, even though we throw videos out there, and yes, there are some people with some actual decent criticism. You know, so how to make your videos better, so on and so forth. There's the internet can be a mean place, and just remember at the end of the day, people that throw this stuff out there are still individuals, you know, with feelings and whatnot. And it can suck, dude. It can suck being on the receiving end of both like praise and hatred. 
of like, you know, individuals out there. Anyway. <laughs> and the anxiety skyrockets. Yeah, the glimpse of PA son. No decimal. Mm. When I first started posting back up on YouTube, that's honestly how I felt. I was like, I have to make another video, but I can't. I don't have time. I work 99% of the time. You know, I teach martial arts. <gasps> People don't know. People are thinking I'm dead. People thinking I dropped off, so on and so forth. It's, it's great. Um... I do want to go ahead and say, I, I, I got to take out my dog really quickly. Uh, so I'm going to quickly run and do that. But I do want to ask you guys, who is your favorite character in this show? Literally, who's your favorite character in the show? Is it Bochi? Is it Ryo? Is it Nijika? Is it, um, oh my God, Kita? Is it Piesad? Who is it, guys? Like, I'll be right back as you guys answer them. Sorry if you guys can hear my my wolf dog like literally howling in the background. Also, editors, I hope you guys edit that part out. Uh, Nijika is my Doritos, dude. Same. Akita Bochi, like the four main characters equally. Rose said, enjoy this currently while I am gone. Well, no, 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 no. The reason why I ask is is because like for you guys, right? Why are they your favorite character? Like legit. And this is I'll open this up to YouTube as well. Whenever it gets to this point for them. Like, why do you guys like that character? What specifically attracts you to liking that character? And that's something that I've been really curious about. Like, not just as an individual that, like, you know, reacts to content, but, like, as, like, a, a genuine therapist, like, looking in, like, what attracts you to that character and why, you know? Also, Pandaline, thanks so much for following, man. I sincerely appreciate it. He admires and cares for Bochi, and I love their kindness. Silly Lily... If you were to encounter someone like, uh, like, like Kita, yeah, would they fall in a friendship for you? Or would they fall in, like, you know, would you be like, wow, that is such an amazing friend. Is that something that you're searching for? And this goes out to everyone. Like, the qualities that you see in these characters, are they something you're searching for? Or are they something that you just genuinely admire from people? If I had to pick Nijika because she's a bit goofy, Ryo's cool because she doesn't give a damn, and also she's crazy enough. Bochi is a very unique character that I've never seen before in the medium of entertainment. Bochi's cool. Bochi's definitely Nijika because of the way she's there for Bochi. I wish I had that growing up. Cherix, yeah. Honestly, the the, the way that they're that this group relies on one another and they help one another out in their own unique ways. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say this out there because 
there are things I really admire in other people and try to develop in myself, not something I specifically look for in others, but always appreciate. Oh, that's great, though. That's an awesome answer. What's your fa favorite spirit character? <laughs> you mean like Bochi character? Um, my favorite Bochi character, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. Oh, no, let me make this point. I admire every single character in the show, right? Because they're all there for one another in their own unique ways. I.e., Ryo did not have to go to that cafe grant that she did get food from Bochi, right? But the way that she talked and she related to Bochi was her own unique way of reaching out and being like, Hey, it's not scary. You have us. You have me on your side. It's okay. You don't have to write for anyone else but yourself. And I want to hear your words behind it. Not like a pop song. Uh, you have Nijika being down to earth and honest with Bochi and being that, like, you know, that force for her to go be able to go and come out. Um, Simfo, I, I'll, I'll answer honestly. You have uh, Kita, quite literally, the extroverted nature and always being aware as well. Like, Nijika and Kita are, like, you know, straight up aware. You have uh, Drunk Onesan, who quite literally is giving Bochi the push that she does, and she's only doing, she's not being controlling about it. She's just being like, here's your push, because she knows, sort of understands and knows the push that, like, needs to go out and happen. For me, all of this is beautiful, but, what for, like, what really impresses me as an individual, and I think this is why I love this character, and I say that, like, she's she's a straight-up waifu, is uh, Nijika's sister. Now you guys might be asking, why Dorito Girl's sister? Dorito Girl's sister did not have to go ahead and allow the band to play, right? They could have said no. They could have said 101 things. But yet she's looking out, not just for the band, yeah, or for her sister, but for the band. Because she sees the way that they're all, like, starting to affect one another and grow. And, like, even though she might have that tsundere, uh, yeah, that tsun 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 tsundere, like, she still cares about it. And she's taking that mature role where she's like, hey, like, this is something for you. This is something that, like, it's, it's such a caring way that I, like, in a lot of anime, we don't get to see it. In a lot of anime, we don't get to see caring parents. It's very rare whenever we see it, we see a caring parent. And honestly, Nijika's sister has stepped up as a caring parent from what we've seen, from what we've heard. She also noticed that Bochi was very good with guitar. She also allowed that safe space and challenged Bochi to start stepping up and taking those first steps. Customer service, being able to go ahead and like, ins like put in goals, realistic goals. You have to audition. This is the process without necessarily holding their hands. Wow. Wow. Yeah, honestly. But jokes aside... Yeah, dude. I, th that's why. That's why I absolutely love it. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue, guys. あげるよ、優雅。今回終わったらすぐに何かあげよう。ほら、今のところ。わお。落ちた。クラスの子心配してたよ。ああ。本当に舐めくしの居候の場所にいた。ゴミ箱とかタンクの中探した甲斐があり
I would introduce this concept, this beautiful concept of the show going forward, right? Um, and, and this is, by the way, no prediction at all, not not even based in psychology. This is just the way that I would take a story, just to show what, like, if I were to go on a realistic evil route, right? I build out the way that the show's been going, and on, like, a highlight about, like, unity, friendship, whatnot, and then, like, start doing little time skips, right? Until a point where, you know, you can even show a band being successful or unsuccessful, right? I.e., what does it look like when you start to grow up and you start to go, um, you know, real life stuff starts coming at you. Or you might have to get a job or you might have to find a partner. You find partners and, you know, it starts getting in the way of your friendships, your hobbies and so on and so forth. And how do you, like, reunify that, like, as adults? And that, for me, would have been like a... Whew, Ooh, like if you really want something like, you know, that like you're emotionally invested in and you see the band's growth and they're playing and, you know, they're growing and whatnot. And then you just like take it into like adulthood and like show sort of like what separation happens and how you can reunify and communication is important. And you're still able to become a rock star at any age. Oof. Oof. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, guys. That's just like evil me if I was writing a story like this the way that I would like uh take it <laughs> i've scored about two hours oh no security is we're going to the fourth guitar awards anyways oh yeah the reason why i paused here i wanted to ask you guys are you guys comfortable in big social events i'm like real question are you guys comfortable in big events that your school had whether it was prom or like you know like uh say a big school festival a culture festival or something like that or were you guys always like, I need my space? I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not real. Like, I love going to Comic Cons and stuff, like the, the local ones, you know? But if I'm near a crowd, I'm like, it's too much noise. And also, if I, I hate, I hate, I hate to be this way. Guys, <laughs> and I'm doing this during a Bochi thing because it's true, especially if you've ever been to like, uh, like a convention. Uh, I went to a convention in San Diego, chat knows about it. It was like a Star Trek convention. Remember that hygiene is important if you ever go to a convention <laughs> or you're in ever in like really, really like tight spaces. Um, in school, I was always very uncomfortable uh, and used to pull a bochi every time. I've only gotten a bit better of it now because I got used to it at work. Oh, silly lily. No. Well, I'm glad that like that you're able to go ahead and like at least you've gotten used to it or better at it. But like, do you guys, are you guys anxious when you're there? Like real question, how do you deal with that anxiety? Cause that's one thing that like we use our friends for is we're dealing with anxiety in many ways, shapes and forms. So that's why I throw that out there. Um, I go to big social events alone. Hold on. I'm reading Finn France. It's kind of sad watching people have fun, but I usually go uh, to them for class or merch hunt. True. Uh, yes, but after a while, a bit of a mental health cocktail and an introvert, but if I go with my partner, it's survivable. Lyria, absolutely. We've been close friends for most of the life and channel social. Yeah, sometimes we use the propellers, like, you know, the extroverts around us can be our propellers to, that guide us into social situations. You know, music festivals, yeah. Yeah, dude. Then sure, but like out in public where it's just everyone gathered together. I love... <sighs> One of my classes, one of my when, when I was doing my master's program, um, and one of the things that I've challenged myself a lot was to go alone and have fun, and this is something that I brought up in the charity stream uh, that we did previously. You can help yourself out in many ways. I you say that you're going to a club, a bar, or something alone. You don't like the music, and you might be a little shy of interacting with others or connecting with others. What I do is I tend to take AirPods, blast my own music. I'm dancing to my own music. I'm just in an environment where I can start connecting with others. You're still going to stand out because of the fact that you're actually enjoying what you're listening to. And, you know, you're not there just like everyone else. Just like, okay, with the music, you know. Crowds and I just look from afar. Also, isolating yourself. Knowing your behaviors. If you're getting anxious, want to step back. If your friends aren't there, you're not comfortable with it. Knowing that it's okay to call it a night and so on and so forth. Like, there are many different things to be aware of. But the most important thing is being aware of where your face is, right? I went to a club fest once at my uni. Apparently, had such a sour look on my face that a security guard asked me if I was sick. Oh, Fin friend. But yes, also make sure that there are no energy vampires around you. And by this, I mean, like, there are some extroverts or some individuals that might be around you. And they might just, like, you you can feel yourself just, like, 
uh, energy wise, just dropping to a point where you're like, I need to go home. I'm like, this, being around like these individuals are just sucking the energy out of me, you know? I kind of am, but I just ignore the anxiety because I recognize that it isn't that big of a deal. True. Hon honestly, Lyra Cake. Okay. And honestly, awesome that you have a partner that supports you throughout all of that. Because that's that's what's key right there is having a partner or having friends that can genuinely understand and support you and all of that. Anyway. <laughs> Somehow that doesn't surprise me. The extroverts were the ones that were like the screaming and the introverts were just like more scared of what the like sound and the social responsibility of elsewhere, right? That that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a social skill after true. Is that Bochi? If this, was, if this was Bochi, dude, I would be wondering, like, yo, what artist actually took the trying to, like... Bochi the art, I know. That's why I'm like, hmm. Hey, big pole. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And honestly, that's sort of what happens when you're with friends is at first you might be embarrassed about something, but look at her now. She's been enjoying the whole thing in the maid outfit. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> My heart, the pizza just flew with my heart. <laughs> Are you sure she's not frozen solid? That's what I thought, dude. <laughs> Oh, God. The only thing that could probably make this worse is if you have a bunch of bullies come over and they, like, try to hit on her or they're trying, like, you know, like, individuals that just don't know how to take fucking social cues. Because you, you, there's often a lot of individuals out there, and especially in the high school settings, where individuals don't know how to respect social cues and boundaries, and they, like, start bullying people for that. And, like, the, the other person is just in complete, like, frozenness, and they're like, they're like, you're not responding to me! And, like, you know, people need to go ahead and step in and interfere in situations like that. Bochi of the Nord Star, oof. Hey, yo! こいつ、俺たちの頑張りにびくともしねえ。みんなをする余裕まで。ただもちゃんねえぞ。すみません。そうだね。ブラ。<laughs> <laughs> 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 First Pokemon I caught. Yeah, there you go.
I'm I'm curious, yeah, because Bochi seems to be disassociating. Like, I mean, I, I get it. The anxiety races to a point where sometimes we have to go ahead and disassociate to deal with it. But like the way that she deals with it, it's like she can be called back at like random moments, either her name or a big decision. I'm starting to add on to the list of Bochi's disassociation now, especially with the form, dude. Also, yeah, Nijika's voice is comforting. <laughs> Simple bit. Actually, a lot of people, a lot of people use disassociation as like their defense mechanism or their coping mechanism whenever they're like too stressed out, anxious, and sometimes we automize it, which is why I always they always point out there, the moment that you get in a car and that you drive to work. Oftentimes, you don't remember every single little detail of turning on the car, putting on your seatbelt, backing out, breathing. Like right now, are you guys manually breathing or are you guys automatically breathing? Are you guys thinking about the way that you guys are breathing, whether it's like long breaths or short breaths? What does breathing look like for you guys? Have you guys just automated to the point where you guys aren't like, you know, and th this is sort of what I'm, well, now I'm manually breathing. <laughs> Uh, this is why I'm throwing it out there is sometimes just association is used in an aspect like that, you know? Yeah. And you guys are now like, are you blinking consciously, you know, are you manually blinking or is it automatic blinking? I'm breathing. Hey, touch me. But the reason why I'm throwing that out there is quite literally when it comes to situations like this, like we do this all the time. Whether it's waking up in the morning, going to the restroom, you know, using your, like, you know, taking a shower, all of that. We don't remember every single step and process, breathe, like, you know, breathing, thinking I'm going to take a right step, left step, right step, whatever, right? Like, we automate certain aspects of it and we disassociate through a lot of these aspects in order to be there and sadly be awake whenever it comes to big situations. Um, but when it comes to this, right? She uses that whenever the anxiety level gets too high and then returns back when she's about to make a big decision or when her friends call her out. And the more that I'm getting into this, the more that I'm like, I. This association can happen aside from like automation can happen from quite literally from like any form of trauma, uh, physical, emotional, social, developmental. Yeah, tra is it can be a trauma if you don't have a lot of friends and so on and so forth. Like, it, it, it is a trauma-based response. It's a trauma-based cognitive distortion or a trauma-based coping mechanism that we use so that we don't have to take everything all in all at once, you know? It's basically automatic. Yeah, a lot of people... Oh, and, and it depends on the way that you use it, sinful bit. For example, are you disassociating all the time, like, while you're at work, and then, like, the moment that you get back home, you're like... Whoa, I'm, I'm, I'm awake. I'm here. Or are you disassociating? Like, say that you're having a normal conversation. Then someone starts talking about a car accident. And you just completely disassociate through it. And then you come back after. Is it because of a traumatic event? Is it because you're too anxious in a social environment? Or is it just because, you know, you're doing something? What's up, Ishimoto? How you doing? The first bully voice actor is a narrator of Fist of the North Star. <laughs> School days are right after. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm like, this is an interesting, like, conversation topic that I feel often goes, yeah, a lot, a lot of, a lot of people would like daydreaming, but there's a difference between daydreaming, like, i.e. still being aware of your surroundings and complete disassociation from your environment, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, wait, hey. Hey, yo, Ryo, no. <laughs> She's learned, she knows how to, like, how to play the algorithm here. Ryo, what are you doing, dude? Sacrifices must be raid to ruin those sweet clicks, Ryo. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Can someone pay for me? Unicorn no Yumekawa Kirakira Omuraisu. 
It's just omelet. <laughs> it's just omelet rice. <laughs> Alright, bro. It's the same thing. Like, you can make eggs in a bunch of different ways. Yeah. It's the same thing with, like, tacos, right? What is a taco other than, like, you know, tortilla, meat, r like, you know, wrapped up like that? What's a burrito? Tortilla, meat, and stuff put in, wrapped up. What's a flauta? Tortilla, uh, meat, wrapped in together. <laughs> What's a quesadilla? Tortilla, you can put meat and cheese wrapped up together. You know, like, you can you can do different stuff with, with eggs, and I get it, dude. I get it. That's that's it's it's wonderful. I don't give a fuck rice. I know, dude. Lasagna is, is a cake. Egg, yeah, yeah. Silly lily priorities, dude. I know. Alright, chat, let's do a yummification spell together. Yeah, yeah. Something like that, right? Oh god! <laughs> kind of mid. <laughs> oh. Oh, bro, that's so over the top. I love it. Oh, that's so over the top. Please. You just made my heart better, dude. Oh, okay to the one magical girl. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> oh, wait, she transforms. I gotta transform, right? Hold on, chat. All right. Full transformation. There you go. Hey, yo, we got the whole band in here. He's done it. He became cat. Madro just don't look right to me. Butler, though. You know what? Cat Ed is always back. Oh, dude. Send Bochi over. Send Bochi over. Send me. Oh, Ryo. I'm being punched in the face, and I feel like Ryo can just step on all of us, and we'd all say thank you. Ryo Senpai, dude, you, 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 you scare people. Hey, you. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I'm just being honest. That butler outfit looks looks great. That's all I gotta say. Uh, let's go. <laughs> Wolf, exactly. Bruh. <laughs> what, what was that? Unreal Engine Bochi? Bochi the Blender? 
<laughs> oh, dude. There was always a girl, uh, that one girl in school making the rest go, wait, shit. True. 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 No budget bochi, A. Hey. Is it? I don't know. I haven't played Undertale, bro. About her fees. Rio. Rio. So what's wonderful and what's awful about this, if I were in their scenario, the number one thing, yes, check out the venue, right? Always make sure you check out the venue and always see if you can go ahead and direct people into a certain way for you to play, i.e., right, in theater, oftentimes what I did, if possible, right, if we were doing like a standing thing is find out the way that you can create a path especially if you have people coming in from the audience, actors, whatever, if you want to have a full-on performance where they can go out and travel safely, or if you're in a, in a band, the way that you incorporate people into music, i.e. your audience, by the way, this is all performance and music psychology. Super, do yeah, you want to know, how, well, number one, how is your setup, right? Number two, how are the acoustics in that setup, i.e. if... The drummer is hitting the snare drum. Is it like overpowering all the other ones? At what level do they have to play? Do you have extra strings and extra drumsticks prepared in case of any situation or another guitar ready to go just in case, right? Um, number three, do a sound chest, do a sound check, do everything. Uh, little bits and pieces like that. Number four, what is your safety steps? I.e. if you're trying to go ahead and like go into the crowd, say that you're jamming out and you want to jump into the crowd and keep playing on top of the crowd. How many steps do you have to take before like you're in the crowd right there's a lot of little things that you got to prepare for in situations like this that's why i'm like hmm, hmm. i wonder if, if that's what they're gonna do they're just gonna like look at it and be like all right cool look at what the space we're gonna perform let's dip oh, scary yeah it can be scary it can be a little overwhelming <laughs> ちゃんぽはもあるし。はい。明日ここに立つのか。結束バンドのみんなで。え、前から思ってたけど、ぼっちちゃんのギターってね。元気入ってるよね。うん。私も気になってた。フレットも錆びてるし、クラックもある。相
Ah, oh, thanks so much, Nightshade. I appreciate it. If you don't mind me asking, what series did you start off with? Same for all of you guys on YouTube later on that are watching this. Um, yeah, what series did you guys start off with? And, like, what, how'd you guys feel after watching, like, a couple of videos or whatnot? Like, you know, because it's not normal content. A lot of a lot of times the videos are over, like, an hour or so. Appreciate you all for watching the, the videos. <laughs> I'm just going to be straight up about it. Appreciate each one of you guys. The stream. Ah, oh, appreciate it, friend. Friend. うん。絶対楽しんでもらえるって。うん。いいね。強気の姿勢。ぼっちちゃん。頼りに。She Thanks for the hydrate, Ruka. お疲れ様です。秋の空気ですね。本当は今頃には身にあるバム作ってる予定だったのに、少しずつでも前に進んでるからいいじゃないですか。いよいよ。well, number one, get enough sleep, Bochi. Because I'll be honest, I fucking whenever I had a performance, I had a, I had a really really hard time falling asleep. I'm doing great, Sefi. How are you doing? I like watching people analyzing things. It's beautiful. Yes, we're watching twelve as well. We're jumping into twelve. We're doing two episodes and knock over. I had bookmarked your Moshko Tensei one long time ago and hadn't gotten around to watching it yet. It was bochi for me. Oh, Nate, I appreciate it, man. Sincerely, that's awesome. Started with ReZero. Fuck, dude. <laughs> you kind of throw me back. Ping Pong the animation. Hey, it might happen, dude. I fucking love Ping Pong. I love playing Ping Pong. Um, but that's awesome. My thing is when it comes to scenarios like this, for bochi, I don't know, dude. She just... If she finishes... Like, she... This show just steals my heart. Every single character in this show is great, dude. Like... My thing is, how is, how is her, number one, her sleep schedule going? Number two, how long, like, how do you think that this event is going to impact her? Because not every event goes swimmingly. Every event has some sort of issue, some sort of complication. You have to go ahead and, and improve that, right? I caught T near you because of T, and then I came from Bochi. Dude, I love T. I know that there's a lot of stuff happening with T at the moment, but I hope that, like, he's doing okay, because I know it's been a little, little out there. Yeah, this person's bashing Moshko Tensei for two hours per episode. No. <laughs> oh, dude, no. I, Moshko Tensei is great. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm like... Bochi, where are we going? I'll address Moshko Tensei in a little bit. I'm excited for it. Oh. An existential crisis. What anime, mate? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> It helps us all, dude. We all get affected by different. <laughs> if any anime is gonna hit you hard, Bochi it is. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. You know, we just, we just gotta perform so that this uh, director is gonna go ahead and pick us up and make us worldwide famous, and we're gonna have our pictures plastered everywhere. You know, from this. That's what I'm saying. Is there's the idealized Bochi versus the realistic Bochi that's always like at war with one another. 
at least she stopped catastrophizing at some point. True, Rainy Winters. You know, they did go ahead and, like, stop, like, catastrophizing some issues at some point. But I think it also has to do with her evolution as a character and her evolution with what she thinks, like, of her friends and how comfortable she is around them, right? She is still doing it from time to time, like, going to the extremes, but not to the point that we first saw immediately, even with just interacting with someone, where she would, like, automatically be like, they're going to hate me, they're not going to like me, you know, so on and so forth. Now it's just, like, the idealized version of her dreams, the sort of, that we're seeing play. Appreciate you, Nightshade. Have a great night. Yeah, 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 no worries. Oh. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
Oh, imagine, wait, you guys had to wait a week for this. You guys had to wait a, a week in this cliffhanger. How? How? <laughs> I'm like, I'm over here like, dude, this hurts. Oh, this hurt. It was a long week, longest week of my life, Anatomist, dude. In pain, it was hell. Give game, oh, bro, are you, are you doing okay, dude? Oh, turning point, yeah, dude. Blizzard, thanks so much for following, man. I appreciate it. Currently watching Bochi, ep yeah, episode 12. My disappointment uh, is, is it immeasurable. Aw. And my day is ruined. I'm going to be straight up about it. What a great episode. What a great episode of setting up. Oh. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Also, yeah, thanks so much for the follow, man. I sincerely appreciate it. Wait a minute. Please, no. If this episode is doing what I think it just did and gave us this episode. Okay. For those of you guys that weren't here, a couple episodes ago, I was talking about the importance of the band. Uh, like, it was, I think it was episode eight or nine. No, no, we're, we are going to continue until the next episode. So I'm going to episode eight or nine. What would Bochi do when the band is threatened? I.e. when the foundation that she still steadily has fought for, has uh, strived for, has tried to go ahead and like, um, you know, like grown in and is literally becoming like her base of support is threatened in any way, shape or form. What would she do in a scenario like that? Right. Well, we already saw that she fled until the band members came. This episode served as a perfect setup and I think we're about to get a big release point in this coming episode. I think we're about to get... Oh, no. I'm going to have to give subs, don't I? I, I feel it. I feel it. I feel something major is going to pop up. Something major is going to pop up that is more than likely going to go ahead and put this ban, i.e. the foundation of change that we have noticed since episode one. Episode one, her whole thing was quite literally, like, starting to go ahead and start a foundation of, like, friendship, support networks, all of that, right? And start, start a change of growth. And, like, we've seen this change of, like, starting to talk to people, starting to go ahead and, like, build a foundation of, like, who's there for her, how she can evolve as a person, not just as a musician, what it means to be a part of the group, talk with the group, interact with others, so we all have different dynamics at work, what it means to go ahead and be there, the ecological theories, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Brenner's like, you know, uh, ecology, you know, if we're talking about moral development by, like, you know, Kohlberg and Piaget, and, like, all of these beautiful concepts that we've talked about is quite literally her solidifying her relationships in that what happens when that is threatened what happens when that is threatened ladies and gentlemen fight or flight freeze or fawn and what happens since we've already seen her one we've seen her freeze in the previous episode two we saw her quite literally fly there's only two options left that they haven't really shown us stop 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 number one fight if something happens to the band, Bochi is going to start fighting and she might do something ridiculous that might be cringy, embarrassing, or something if the band is in peril because that is her safe zone and she would rather take the flak. Or she might do something cringy or embarrassing just for the sake of trying to go ahead and take, divert attention or do something. Or she might fawn. Or she like gives the power over to someone else and does something else instead. No, Rula, this is going to be broken down into two separate videos. <laughs> My heart is just like dun 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 at the moment. It's fucking going a hundred miles an hour, guys. Sorry. Yeah, but that's a part of like uh you know freezing. It's not really fawning or fighting, you know. Anyway, YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you guys, if you guys like the videos, honestly share them around. Um, I, I suck at promotion, a self promotion in any way, shape, or form. Um, I appreciate you guys liking, watching, so on and so forth. But genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, each and every single one of you guys, for watching all of these videos. Hope you guys practice that self-care. And if you guys like it, make sure to share it around to people that might actually like the show, might actually like discussing some of these concepts. Appreciate y'all. 